Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be learning how to make neckties. Now, of course, as always, we're going to have a downloadable pattern in the description box below. And with that pattern, we're both going to be able to make a standard tie and a skinny tie. All right, now the fabric that we're going to be using today is a light chambray color. And this is just what we're using. If you would like to use silk or um, any other standard tie material, that's totally fine. It really is okay with whatever you want to use. Um, we're just being a little bit creative and using this. Um, for the backing, not the interfacing, we're going to be using a soft twill. And then for the actual interfacing, we're going to be using a heavier denim, or you can use twill, or you can use actual interfacing too. This is just an alternative. Um, just keeps the tie a little bit more flowy and structured. All right, so here we are with the pattern. And if you're following along and you've downloaded it and printed it out, this is what it should look like all taped together. And of course, as always, if this is a pattern that you're planning on doing multiple times, um, go ahead and trace it onto something a little bit heavier that's easier to trace and a little bit more weighted. Um, but we just have it cut out on paper just to show what it looks like as the printout. So here we have the envelope itself, which is the outside of the tie, the part that everyone sees. This is going to be the front, this is the middle, and this is the end of the tie. So it's split into three parts. And this is up here is the top of the fabric, here's the bottom, here's the left and the right side. So the reason they are angled the way they are is because a tie is always cut on a bias. And the purpose of that is that it gives the garment, whatever it may be, a tie, a shirt, a dress, a skirt, it gives it a more flowy look because it allows it to stretch at an angle that isn't possible when it's cut up and down or side to side. So the easiest way to place your pattern to cut on a bias is to match up the flat edges with the flat edges of the fabric. So the front side of the pattern, one of the flat edges on the front of the tie, you line up there and then you just do the same with the middle and the end. And pretty much just go ahead and trace, make sure it's only one layer, you don't need to double layer because we have a separate fabric for the back lining. So just go ahead and trace. All right, so now before we start cutting, um, the length of this tie is about 56 inches, which is a standard size tie. Now, if you want to make it shorter or longer, the place that you would do that would be in the middle. So if you'd like it shorter, you just take it in equally on the top and the bottom edges either shorten it or lengthen it. And obviously, if you're gonna lengthen it, you wanna move it up. You can play with that, do whatever you need to do with that. But we're just gonna make a standard length tie, so we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting. Now on to cutting stage two, we've got the 
two tipping linings, the front and the back, and then this is the keeper self that goes on the back side of the tie to keep the skinny part of the tie attached so it doesn't flop all over. And we're just going to be cutting this out on the thin twill that is going to be just on the back. And last but not least, we have the lining, which again, just like the previous two, make sure it's only one layer of fabric and lay out your pattern on there and just go ahead and trace. So we've got the front of the tie, the middle part of the tie, and then the tail end that is hidden behind that gets tucked into the tie keeper. So we're going to sew all these pieces together along the diagonal edges. And remember to keep the right sides together so the seam is on the inside and hidden. And now when we put the raw edges together that need to be sewn, they're going to end up looking sort of opposite and crossing each other like this. So once you get the front and the middle sewn together, then it'll be sewn together there. And then you take the tail end and you just do the same thing. Sew it right along, right along here. And once that's sewn, It'll be one long piece and all three sections will be sewn together. Okay, now once you've had it sewn together, it should look like this, the two seams. And you should notice that your fabric is a little bit stretchy and that's what happens when you cut on the bias. Um, now we're going to flip it over and we are going to steam and iron these seams open. Um, now depending on the fabric that you use, say if you use silk, just be very careful on what temperature you have your iron because um, you definitely want it on a lower, cooler setting, um, but you can iron silk, just make sure that it's at the correct temperature. Um, but we're using cotton, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so let's just go ahead and iron them flat out. For this next step, we're going to take the tip lining for the front, so it's the biggest one of the two. And what we're going to do is we're going to be making a chalk line about a quarter of an inch in on each side. And we're going to start at the corner right here. And we're just going to make a parallel line almost all the way down to the tip, but just about a half inch before. So leave about a half inch room between that line and the other side. And go ahead and do the same with the other side. so that it looks like this. Now from there, we're going to line up the fabric edges of both and make sure that the right sides are together. So this is the right side of the outside of the tie and the right side of the lining, the sides that are gonna be showing. So line those right up. 
right sides together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew right along this line and this line only. We're not going to go to the edge of here or to the edge of here. So we'll sew here. And then while this is sewn, we're going to bunch up the underneath so that we can line up these edges over here. And we're going to do the same exact thing on this side. So it'll be bunchy underneath, but we're just sewing that little bit. Now after the tip is sewn together, it should look like this. Straight flat across on this side. This side's got some extra fabric to it. Now the next step is we're going to fold the edges together so that they are flush with one another. And we're going to make a chalk line at a 90 degree angle with this folded side. And that 90 degree line is going to match up with the edge of the end of where you last sewed. And then we're going to sew right across on that line. Now once this seam is sewn straight across there, you can go ahead and trim off the excess fabric without getting it too close to the seam so that it unravels. So trim it like that. And then just turn both pieces right side out. So this will be the inside. This is what the outside will look like. Now that it's turned right side out, we're going to flatten it out and go ahead and iron. Once that's ironed out, we're going to go and do the same exact thing with the other end. Now that we've got both tip lining sewn in, the next step is to insert the actual lining or interfacing. Now you're gonna wanna take the thickest tip of the lining that you've got. Here's the end piece, this is the tip. You wanna place that as far into the tip as you can. You can always use a, a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors or something to help you get it all the way down there. Once you've got that, um, it can be helpful to pin the lining against the outside fabric all the way down the middle because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be folding these sides across the lining and you want to just be sure that the lining stays in place and it doesn't get sh um, shuffled around as you're folding over and ironing. So you can go ahead and pin. Now if you've got these ball head pins, just be careful when you're sewing, I mean when you're ironing, because the irons will melt the, the head of the pin. So. 
From there on out, you just fold over as tightly to the edge of the interfacing as you can, and you just iron the edges. So now once you have both sides ironed down, we're going to move into some more ironing. We are going to fold in each side about halfway in towards the lining, the interfacing. So just about that far in. You're gonna iron that. And you're gonna do that on both sides all the way down the tie. Do it on this side as well. So now the purpose of doing that is so that once the whole tie is ironed in that way, then these two sides come together nicely like that. And to finish up the tie, we're going to be hand sewing it. Just stitching across back and forth, but we'll get to that. The reason we're hand stitching it is All right, now we're gonna sew the tie keeper. And what we're gonna do with that is we are going to fold it the long ways, right sides together, and we are just going to sew right along the long edge. So just about a quarter inch in, not far. So here we've got the largest part of the tie, the front. This is the tie keeper. Now to attach the keeper to the back side of the tie, what we're going to do is fold it in half and then about eight inches up from the side corner, about eight inches is where we're going to sew that on. And you're going to put the raw edges together, just like that on the very edge.
Now, the next step is we are going to hand sew the two sides together. So we're gonna start off by pinning it all together before we sew so it's all set in place. Just like that and then make your way down the whole tie. Now to do the sewing up the whole tie, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be slip, slip stitching all the way up. And so what we wanna do is make sure there's a knot tied in the under your thread. Poke it through the end here first. Pull it all the way through. So then your knot is hidden underneath. Now from there, when you make your stitches, you don't wanna go through both layers. You just want to lightly go through a single layer. And then, so we went through the bottom part. Now we need to connect it to the top part. So you'll want to go a little bit on the underneath side and remember to only go through the single layer so it doesn't show up on top. The whole point of this is to keep the stitches hidden. All right, now to finish the tie keeper, what we're going to do is we're going to flatten it out just like that so it's folded back on top of itself. We've got a little area there for the tie to go through. Now where we're gonna sew is a straight line here and a straight line here and we're going to make them solid straight stitches but you have to make sure that you don't sew all the way through the layers because obviously you don't want the stitches showing on the other side so you have to be sure to only only catch the one layer of fabric when you're doing those um, pinning is going to be the best bet in keeping it in place. So just go ahead and pin on both sides. And 
and go ahead and start stitching. And once you've sewn on your tie keeper, your tie is all set and all finished. So be sure to like and subscribe on our channel and be sure to check back every Sunday. We'll be posting new videos and see what we're making next.